Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So I've got the new iPhone 11 Pro. I just got that like about a week ago. It's um, October 8th. It's like past midnight. So um, this is going to be, assuming everything works out the way it should, my new camera for at least every travel uh, that I do. Um, I started the intro with uh, Filmic Pro. And what do you know about as soon as I did my actual just introduction and I talked about I had the phone, Filmic Pro crapped out. That's why we can't have nice things, Filmic Pro. Everyone has great luck with your app. I don't. So I'm using the native app, which should be just fine. Uh, recording, should be recording t uh, 4K 60, and um, we'll see how it goes. Um, so I'm recording all seven episodes tonight, including Halloween. So this will get me into Oregon. I've also got my Vixia over there as a backup. In case um, something really bad happens, I can't use this phone, which sucks because I bought the phone specifically for that. I still have my iPhone 10. This is my phone. That's my camera. I know, it's an expensive toy, but I've been wanting to do this for a few years, making my iPhone solely a camera. And I, wouldn't, I wasn't really planning on buying the 11 um, necessarily. I watched the keynote, of course, I'm like, Ooh! But then I like looked at I looked at uh, the specs and I uh, quite a few people I follow in the uh, photography videography world um, definitely were hyping up uh, the camera stuff and that's really why I went ahead and did it because um, otherwise I mean I was going to keep this phone I mean I, I I paid it off I had a I kind of had like four or five months left on on it to pay off I went and paid it off now I just have that on the payment plan so. Um, uh, so yeah, Oregon's coming up, and uh, I got a bunch of wines to review. I'm excited, and uh, let's just get into it right now. And I think it's the first time I ever said that on this episode. I almost never say that. Trust, trust me, I just felt like saying it. You know, black cats and Halloween's coming up. All right, so uh, what are we going to do? So we're going to start with some Riesling. Oh, I don't need that in the shot. Uh, so yeah, I'm not using the DJI Osmo Pocket um, because it's great. But it it breaks stuff up into like four gigabyte files, which comes out to around what, five to eight minutes or whatever. That's why I also got this one. And I, I'm front facing camera, so it's great, so I can see everything. That's how I knew. Besides that, the of the um, you can't see it, but you know, on the iPad, that's how I knew that the uh, uh, Filmic Pro had crapped out because I could see it, and um, the iPad eventually on the remote control saw it too. Uh, now. This this camera actually can see like way out here. Like it actually can see the tips of my fingers, though I probably cropped it in so you can't see it, but maybe I'll crop it out. Um, so yeah, the green screen. <laughs> It'll be funny because you'll see the green screen, but you'll see <laughs> you'll see the background. All right, um, let's just get into it because I got a lot of stuff to do. I still have to set up Halloween. I'll, I'm recording that one last, even though the Halloween episode is going to be kind of about two episodes before the last one so because i'll be in oregon and all that anyway let's let's check it out so uh, again like last set like the last set of episodes i used a random number generator so i just have a list of the wines that i have and i you know went with the whites and how many did i have i think it was like 20 on the list though i think i've actually drank a couple of those i just haven't taken them out of my cellar out of my uh, stock um though i do have some wines i need to add into it but uh uh, did a random number generator, and then same thing for the reds. It was like 90 something on the reds. Uh, like one of them was 84. I'm like, well, dude. I mean, I actually counted all of it from one to 84 instead of like from backwards, from 90 backwards, just to make sure I had it right. Um, anyway, so let's just do it. So uh, first wine up is the Bolig Lennart uh, Weinherbach 
uh, Riesling. Uh, this is a 2013. I bought this uh, at uh, bought this from Psalm Select um, like a year ago, last year sometime. Uh, total cost was twenty dollars thirty eight cents. Um, that was you know including uh, the shipping because uh, they, they charge you just a little bit on shipping, even though it's quote free shipping when you do like a summer hold, which is I think this is one of the summer hold wines. Um, and, uh, uh, like tax shipping insurance, not really shipping, but shipping insurance and then tax. So I actually have two wines that today I'm doing with, 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 uh, screw caps. Um, I only have one of these, which I think this is the smaller one, but I have like three of the larger ones. I haven't, I haven't, I mean, these are all free. I need to buy actually more of these, like the smaller ones. So hopefully the other one is like the larger version. So let's get into it. Bam. All right. All right, that's on there securely. All right, so uh, what is, so who, who are these guys? So um, these guys are um, in the Mosul and uh, they're kind of a little bit farther south than where I was, more in the uh, Peace Porter area. So I'm just kind of read you the tasting notes from Psalm Select. So, um, Let's see here. I guess I guess that the actual cost was the actual true cost was like, um, like nineteen or eighteen dollars because it was like it was under twenty on uh, for Psalm Select, the actual like you know the the regular price. All right, so um, let's see. They're founded by Gunter and Josefina Bolig uh, in nineteen sixty, um, and. Uh, so Bullock Leonard more than likely is a name unknown to most people, largely due to the small production uh, of the family run estate. Uh, they have records that indicate their ancestors were crafting Riesling uh, in the Mosul back uh, as, as long ago as the 1600s. Um, prior to their marriage, uh, Gunther uh, had vineyards in Trittenheim and Josefina, Jos Josefa, I want to say Josefina, Josefa, um, sorry, Josefa, if you're watching this, um, uh, owned vineyards in both Drone, D-H-R-O-N, and Peaceport. So um, when they got married, they combined everything together as far as their vineyard holdings. Um, the, uh, they've been running their estate, has 18 acres throughout all those areas, through those towns, um, and they've been doing it for over 30 years. Uh, all three towns follow a contiguous vertical line down the Mosul River, and each of their holdings are situated on vertical vertiginous slate slopes. Probably should look at what vertiginous means. Maybe I'll put down what it means down there. Um, what else? Uh, despite their tiny size, the Bullocks have made heavy financial investments, making sure to tend their vines by hand and extract only the purest juice. Okay, yeah. And they have stainless steel equipment. Uh, so today's Weiherbach uh, will also be a new name for most. Uh, the name is taken from it's taken after a spindly brook that merges with the Mosul River at the north end of Trittenheim. Uh, the vineyard prominence here is called Altar, Altarchen, and uh, the Bullock Leonard's prized south southwest facing parcel within the site is also called uh, Weirbach. Uh, so then he's just got all that. Uh, so is here a classic Mosul slate, but they aren't red or blue, they're gray. Um, they make sure that the ancient terroir is aerated via gentle plowing. Uh, after hand harvesting, their coveted parcel grapes are transported to the winery in small bins to avoid any premature bleeding or and or fermentation. Lightly pressed and fermented with native yeast and upright uh, fooders, which is the German name for foudre, uh, so like just, just big vats, uh, and steel and stainless steel tanks, um, where prolonged aging occurs on the leaves for several months or longer. And then prior to bottling, it is lightly filtered without fining. All right. Um, yeah, let's get into this. Let's see what else. Um, is there anything else on this? Nope. It says drink now till 2030. So drinking a little young, I guess. I right, just classic, you know, Riesling, um, uh, Riesling aromas, a little bit of that quote. I wouldn't call it really petrol exactly. It's more of a plastic wax smell. But, you know, definitely something that you get with Riesling a lot. 
um, some somewhat tropical fruit, I guess. You know, um, it's more like. I turn off the. I don't know how it is. I heard I heard a, uh, an email notification from another device. I want to make sure that this was turned off, but I also have it on do not. No, do I have it on do not disturb? About to find out. No, I don't. I do now. So, um, kind of a peach orange. Uh, today, this I, I did tasting it this morning on Monday, and like every white wine was orange, 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 orange. So, kind of continuation of that theme. But yeah, it's almost like a sweet tart like aroma to it. So you know, touch of lime, touch of lemon, a uh, little bit of orange, um, peach. Not really apricot, but. And then like a chalkiness. So that sweet tart also to me evokes like a chalkiness to it. So we got that going on. I'm just wondering how much color grading and all kind of adjustments I have to do using just the camera app. I think after this episode, I'm going to use the moment app um, because they have also other controls and hopefully theirs will work. So it's just the only thing that sucks is that it's not remote control and I can't figure out how to use it, the watch with that phone. But in, in an interview situation, I'm going to get up anyway. So this is unusual. I wouldn't normally use the phone for my for the podcast at home. I would normally use the Vixia um, just because I have a remote control for it and it's just easier to set up. Or it's more reliable, so that way. So I find it a little funny that the two wines that I had this kind of like, I really don't get why people get, you know, get all excited about, you know, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in general, uh, but like Burgundy and then like Riesling. Why do, why do people get excited about these wines? And then I, then, you know, I go visit those two places and then it kind of like, oh, I get it now. So I have to say that, you know, I really enjoy Riesling way more now. Is it my favorite wine? No, I don't really have a, a, a true favorite wine though. In a few more reviews, we're going to hit an area that I think longtime viewers know. I, I really, really like that area. But, I mean, this just has great flavor to it. It's a six-year-old wine, and you'd never know it. And that's one of the awesome things about Riesling. It, it can have some age, and you'd never know. I mean, not really. I mean, unless you, like, have had this wine, like, the, whatever the current release is, say maybe there's a 16 or 17 out there, um, you know, or pro maybe even 18, uh, Potentially an 18 out there, you're tasting it side by side. With that said, knowing it is Riesling and knowing how old it is, I am looking for things that give you a little bit of age indication and there's a little more richness and roundness to it. And whereas young Riesling, as a general rule, I don't know if this Riesling would be that way, is usually really, really crisp and tart and 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 like very linear, whereas this is showing some more complexity to it, which can be part of the aging process in the bottle. Um, but you know what, everything on the aromas was, is there again, um, somewhat like a fruit cup. It's not as much of the sweet tart, but it's kind of a bit of sweet tart there. Um, acid of course is rippingly high mouth is watering. Uh, so a great, a great wine to kind of start things off. Um, super delicious. And if you can find this, this wine, for 20 bucks or less, you definitely should be buying this. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how much of this is going to be available in, in the States in like a retail level, but you know, if you are in some type of like online thing, or you can look for like wine.com or one of the other places like wine library or whatever, um, they might have something like this. They may have more recent version. Like, yeah, you should, you should buy this. It's super tasty. All right. Um, God, I kind of want to crush that while I'm editing tonight. I, mean, I, I actually just updated the computer to Catalina. I didn't do this one yet because I kind of need it for the show. But I've updated uh, the iMac to Catalina, so hopefully nothing screwed that up with Final, Final Cut.
there was a final cut update too today. I have to I have to do that. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. Um, you can click links below uh, to find out more. I don't. I have a website for for Bullock Leonard, um, but it really has nothing on it. But so I'll, but I'll have a link to that. I'll have a link to the Psalm Select uh, tasting notes, so you can read that, so you get a little more information on it. And uh, yep, yeah, remember I'm going to Oregon, so I haven't gone there yet. Um, so if you want to throw some ducats my way to help with the cost of that, that'd be awesome. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.